hey y'all hey welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be all about getting into that new i9 form so as of right now you can use the old one until the end of the month which is about what a week week and a half and then as of november 1st all notaries have to use the new i9 form which is a little different so that's why i figured i'll make an updated version and show you exactly what you're going to be looking forward to let's get into it So today we're going to be discussing the new I-9 form. So this form comes into play starting November the 1st. So you can use it now, but it's mandatory November 1st of this year. So I figured we could just kind of go over it because it, it looks a little different than the one in my previous video that I walked you through to complete. And some of the biggest things that have changed with this document is part one and two, which were on two different pages, have all been combined to be on one page. And so like the preparer page, so like if somebody assisted this person with completing it, that's at the end. And then the re-verification page, it's optional. So you're most likely not going to see this page. The only time that this page will show up is if this person is a rehire. And I mean, that honestly almost never happens. I, I've been doing this a little over three years and I've never completed this rehire form. So that just goes to show that you most likely won't have to do that. But if there's like a translator, if that person speaks a different language or somebody that helped prepare this, that would be this. But ultimately for you, for the notary, these two pages, pretty much what you're going to see, you'll see that page and you'll see this page versus before you would see three to four pages when a person shows up with this document. So I want to say some of the, the newest things about this document Ultimately, I guess they recognized that people were going to be working remotely, so they had to update some rules. So that's where this comes into play. At. And then let's see, they pretty much have three days to do this from the day to hire. So that's something you should know. So in case they ask you that um, and the old I-9 form, the one that we went through before, that can still be used right now today. We're still in October. But as of October 31st, you cannot use that form anymore. And you would need to use this form. And you can tell the difference because down here at the bottom, you see where it says I-9? It says addition. This is the actual addition of the page that as of November 1st, what you're going to be using. So if you made any copies to put in your file to take with you to your appointments, you want to throw those away and get these because if a person messes up on this you'll have an extra document of for this one not the old one remember that throw those away because now this one you see is august 1st 23 so ultimately this is the new form this part usually will be filled out by the employer but if not i've seen people come with blank forms so they would just hand fill this out not you them and then they would check whether they're a citizen, a non-citizen, whatever their uh, citizenship is. And then this is where they would sign it. So that person in front of you that's showing you their identification will sign here and put the date there. Down here, this is where the you would put their um, identification information. So if they had anything in list A, which is this, all of this is list A. If anything like a US passport or a, a passport card or a permanent resident card or anything that's on this list, you would only need to use one form. So you would fill this part out for that one document and then move on down to the here. You wouldn't have to do this, but if they don't have this, then you go to the or. So it's B and C. So most people are going to show up with their driver's license and their social security card. So then that's where you would fill this out according to that information. 
And the biggest notable change for this form is the inclusion of this little checkbox right here. You see that? And that's basically saying um, whether the employer, if they verified these documents remotely or if it was done in person, so you're doing it. So if you are actually doing it, that box is not going to be checked. That box is checked when somebody's going to be working remotely and they get it done remotely. That's when that will be checked. But other than that, you move down here. This is where your name would go as the notary. But remember, on this document, you are not putting a stamp here. Whenever you don't use your stamp, you are not really being a notary on that form. So for this form, you're an authorized representative. And so you would write that after your name. You would sign your name here and you would put the date. Now this information here, this is for that the place of employment. So wherever that, pe that person is about to work at, you're going to put their name there and their address there. So you see it says employers, not employees. When I first started, I did not know. I used to put my information there because I didn't know. And ultimately, we all know when you first start out, there is nowhere to go to, to find out exactly how to fill these forms out. So you kind of just wing it till you know better. So here we are. That'll be the business name and the business's address. And this, just in case you forget anything, you have this in these forms, you can download these forms for your state. So everybody, you can go there and download it. Uh, you can just put a uh, principal I-9 form and then put your state's name. And you will be able to get this document. So ultimately, that's kind of it for the, this is the new one. So instead of all the different three or four pages, it's basically going to be just that one page. Because they'll bring those two pages. This page, if they don't have a translator or a preparer they're not going to bring that page and if they're not a rehire they won't bring this page either so you ultimately you're going to help them complete so they'll do that part you'll do this part you'll sign it and that's it you're done this is a pretty easy document to complete it's not hard at all but you just got to make sure you make yourself knowledgeable about it and just kind of google it at the end of this video, I'm going to just put some the different pointers as to what makes this document different than the other one, just in case so you can screenshot it and keep it for your records. Okay. All righty.